If you guys like the thumbnail pun, then I wrote it. If you didn't, then Mr. George wrote it. What an interesting game this one was. Eagles trying to throw it away again at the end. So that last ditch play to, to try and sneak uh, some extra time, which would have been fun. But um, thankfully for them, they held on. I couldn't imagine if two games in a row they could give up ridiculously high leads um, to, to decent sides, obviously. But I mean, what's happening to them at the end of these games is strange. And they're just making silly errors, like the kick out in the full, the... Um, yeah, just random errors and, and getting you know, getting the ball stolen a few times. The Brandon Smith steal was pretty elite. Uh, I've seen that a few times this year. Actually, Munster had one where he, he stole it and ended up running you know, 20 metres, stepped a couple of blokes and, and went over. But this one was just like a, you know, he just like he walking down the street and someone just stole the handbag and he's off and away. And, and that was and that was Smithy to get over that try, get over for that try. And a much better game from him. Finally, obviously no negatives was the big one with the 57 in the 61 minutes. And if we could see this on a regular basis, then he would be a great pickup for next week. And he's someone that we haven't really spoken about, but he's going to be around that 400k mark next week. And just an awkward price, obviously. We're looking at the moment for cash outs, um, potentially some, you know, if we have an aggressive cash cow that could could make us sort of two to 300k in the next four or five weeks. And that would be great as well. But those mid-range guys that you know, won't be keepers in, in Brandon Smith, for example, are just a little bit too awkward. Unless you're sitting there with like 12 to 13 trades, I don't think you can take the gamble on someone like him. Um, but a great game nonetheless for, for Brandon there. The cheese, all right, DCE 68, just in a game that was completely weird. The first half with 11 errors or six penalties, just a really stop start slow game. I think the highest tackle count was 20 by halftime and that was by um, I think Chris Lewis, Harry Grant. Um, and potentially one of the one of the manly boys so scores were super low coming into that second half and a few of them were saved and we'll speak about pap in a sec but dca was pretty much the only one uh, along with olakawatu and and cola that were he's sitting in in a strong position heading into the the second stanza so dca doing his thing again with a 40 20 and you know the couple of tries is plenty of kick meters probably a few less on the run meter side but he's definitely clearly going to be one of the top halves in our game and, and over the next few weeks you know considering he should back up in around 18 and with with manly being you know sitting around that eighth position he's going to need to play as many games as possible to get them uh somewhere in that top you know five six seven i think to give him a shot at potentially winning this year even without chaboyevich obviously but dc is going to be a man that we all want heading down the stretch olakwatu again showing his dominance only the 62 minutes in this one but nine tackle breaks to go along with uh, the, the the two offloads 20 tackles and 100 meters and a try. So he was great again, and he's someone that you could look at having in your team for next week. We spoke about him only briefly, um, but yeah, he's someone that, that could be a keeper going into the, the rest of the season. You know, sitting at a, a price of a little bit over 50, uh, could do your job. Sorry, I, I said to hit pick him up next week. I meant in 18 for Olaquatu. Uh and Cola. So a few people were thinking about moving him on this week and comes out with his best game of the year, really, you know, with the two tries. The the draw that Olakawatu has on, on defense is, is pretty incredible. So for DCA to have him on his outside uh, and then for Kola to have Olakawatu on his inside there, it's going to be really beneficial for him going forward. You know, he drew that much attention that he just threw a face ball and Kola picks up his, his second try and, you know, seven tackle breaks, 195 meters for him was a very um, very special game. He's going to make a bunch more cash. <coughs> the people squad, unfortunately, removed him from the squad. But um, the question is going to be now in round 17, do you trade him out or do you hold him for a few more weeks and get a little bit more cash, use him as a center and a wing fullback backup and, and go from there? That's really the question that you have to ask yourself heading into this round. If, you don't, if you're lacking the trades, then he could be a hold. If you have heaps, then you know, he might be at a decent price now with this extra bump to be able to downgrade to uh, a cash out and upgrade around him. Nelson with a, a nice try for him. <laughs> Absolutely killed Garrick there. Ran straight over the top of him. I would not want to be behind, um, you know, <laughs> getting, getting in front of uh, Nelson, that's for sure. And then Olin with the one-on-one, you know, -on -one basically, a few minutes later to go over. Pap, that was the interesting one. So it's actually a lot of people that decided to pick him up in this game and was sitting, you know, very, very low early on the game. Had the one try assist, but just, you know, I think it was about 12 or 13 at half time and was at that position for a lot of the you know a good a good portion of the second half with with manly really dominating scoring a few tries early and 
And obviously, when Storm are in the tries, Pappenhausen's in the tries. And, and to get two tries and two try assists in that last sort of you know 15 minutes there, it's great for him. Only ran the 94 meters, there's a lot of finishing it off, um, and a few passes out of scrums and, and bits and pieces to get them over the line. A few people spoke about Husey there uh, missing out on a try assist. That one that he passed to Pap, he did not. He didn't do any of the work. Pap just you know grabbed it, ran sort of five to ten meters, and then dummied it and went through DCE, a bit of poor defense from him uh, to go through for that try. So a few people were asking about that that one there with, with Jerome potentially getting that try assist and, and, he, and he didn't deserve it in that one. I personally own him now, so um, definitely no bias on that one. Um, he just at the time hadn't been given his line break and a tackle break, so was waiting for that one to come through and he picked up a 44, which was okay really. You know, In a game where they got absolutely pumped, the amount of try scoring was just ridiculous and when Pat was the one involved in all of it rather than Jerome just the circumstances really like it was a bit down the left hand side there was you know a couple of tries off the scrums with Olam's one and also uh, Nelson so when things were going okay for or decent for, for Storm he wasn't involved and to get a 44 with the eight negatives was okay. Kick meters were up to a decent amount. Run meters was fine. Just didn't get the attacking stats we're, that we're looking for from him. So hopefully a bit of an improvement next week and he can do a lot better. And you saw that with Harry Grant as well. The, the 38 tackles, the 75 meters, a little bit kick, kicking out of dummy half, but you know seemed to be in the first half of the game that any time there was an error from him or a penalty, uh, Manly tended to score on the other end of it. So he didn't have his best game and he's going to have to step up as well. Thankfully for Hughes that he will play next week and Harry won't be. So definitely a, a good pickup at some point, whether it's you know in 18, he's going to lose a little bit of cash in 18, but maybe it's a 19 or 20 once you've uh, sorted out a few other positions in your squad. All right, we moved down a little bit lighter there. There's a couple of guys there. Chris Lewis was someone that kind of fell uh, under the radar a little bit heading into this week. He was starting on, in the edge and we see Kafusi. Uh, you know, moving moving back to the US to, for family reasons for for a few weeks there, so Lewis um, comes you know came into the starting side and did a job with thirty three, and he's still going to be available next week at a pretty cheap price. He'll go up a little bit, but uh, overall he's been dropping in price because he hasn't been playing very many minutes. So Lewis could be a, a sneaky cash out option next week, and then you know will either be playing off the bench or, or getting uh, you know games off when when they're back to full strength. So. That was Lewis there. If you're still owning uh, Andrew Davey, he had an okay game, a little bit lower than what he's done in the, you know, what he's been scoring in the past. Uh, but he's going to be one to be moving on, heading into 17. <coughs> okay, Ruben Garrick there. So 25 for him. Unfortunately, had uh, you know, got copped a really big knock in that first half and and hurt his hip. So running the ball for him was not on the cards. Uh, I think he had 10, 10 run meters at half time. Obviously, ran an extra 50 odd. He looked a little bit more free in the second half, which is good. And considering he played the rest of the of the game, it mustn't be too bad. And then he'll he'll get the rest next week in 17, and he'll be fine from there. So thankfully, ended up with a couple of tries just to get him to that 25. But if you own him, obviously a pretty sad uh, night out. But he's uh, he's been scoring super well, so we can't complain too much with his output. All right, the slightly annoying one, if you own Joshy King, was that he got only 36, 36 minutes this week and off the bench. And we know what his PPM's like. He needs those big minutes and unfortunately wasn't able to get that. So if, you hold, if you're holding him through 17, you're going to lose a bit of cash now. And I think it's still worth holding him for that one week next week. I'm expecting some bigger minutes from him. More than 36 anyway. So you should be getting somewhere around that 30 to 40 in terms of points. And I think that's worth holding for that one or two smaller uh, cash drops. That would be my general thoughts. Chaboyevich missing five tackles uh, was strange. Obviously, got the early mark, and they scored a couple of tries when he went off. So, um, shows his value, of course. And really, the other ones to think about and talk about are uh, Josh Schuster got 18 minutes and ended up with a, a stupid penalty at the end there. Uh, the, yeah, that was the other one, sorry. The offside um, from the kickoff, a meter or two offside there. Grant Anderson, a few people talking about. So, got the eight in the 80 minutes. So, I don't know how much of a cash out he's going to be. Uh, it's going to stop his price rises. For people that had had him, um, we might be getting him a little bit cheaper next week. I'm not exactly sure on the break even, but that's that, guys. That's the first game of the week. It's actually a fair a fair amount of uh, fantasy relevant content in this one. I hope you enjoyed that, and we'll get into some draft stars videos now. See you later.